of our big guy out. So, Ramon Manuel is Cariso. Welcome. Uh, if you're here for the first time, you are very welcome. The most welcome this morning. Being here with us in the service this morning, and so. So nice to have you. So turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, nice to see you this morning. Come on, church, be cheerful. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, nice to see you this morning. The local that I do, I'm going to be out, which I told this is the word of God, and uh, I'm going to use mostly English. Uh, for the sake of those that do not understand our mother tongue. So welcome to the service this morning. The word this morning is titled, The Great Falling Away. The Great Falling Away. Hallelujah. We are, we are, we are witnessing uh, uh, something that is so phenomenal. Uh, we are watching how Nations and countries have begun to deviate from the truth of God. We have watched uh, New Zealand and uh, many other countries who were once uh, declared Christian nations uh, about some hundred years ago, but right now it is now a secular country. We have witnessed the people that are now falling away from the Christian faith. <coughs> when I was at Bible College, I remember uh, Professor Lloyd Geary, who was uh, the principal of Knox College. Uh, at the time, uh, there was a debate going on on how could someone who was once the principal of a theological college later on in life declare himself an atheist and i was asked a question from the cwm council for world mission they asked me Sebi, what do you think of professor Lloyd giving and i said he has completely lost the plot and so right now he's teaching at the university as an atheist. The man who began his life in the church and he is now an atheist. And I'm asking the question, what happened? And so I want you this morning to understand that uh, we are now living in an era where a lot of Christians used to believe in God but they are now they are now began to fall away, and all, and all of them, and majority of them, are actually serving the devil. Michael Jackson, for example, started his uh, music career in the church, but then he slowly deviated from the truth, and uh, I don't know what happened to him. So I wanted to listen this morning. Come with me to Matthew 24, verse 3. So you see, Jesus, right from the very beginning in his ministry, told the disciples and many others that were listening to him, he told them that this is what's going to happen. He said, this is what's going to happen. And then the disciples asked him, what are the signs, what are the signals that will warn us of when these things will happen? Hallelujah. So it is not something that it just happened all of a sudden. It was already recorded in the scripture of what is now happening and we are witnessing right now. Hallelujah. Now, although we have many Muslims and, and other faiths who are, are now born again Christians, but there are a lot of Christians who have actually departed from the faith. Tonight, in the service tonight, I will put on, uh, on the screen a video clip of what the Pope, and I'm not scared to say this, what the Pope is now believing. 
to me, is a direct attack on the Christian faith. So you will see and you will hear his own words tonight. But I am here as a servant of the law to warn the people these days. I'm here to warn them. It's not in the text. But come with me. Can we have a look at uh, Isaiah 56 verse 10? I think so. Isaiah 56 verse 10. It's not in, the, in my uh, notes, but it just come up in my head. My responsibility as the servant of the Lord is to bark. This is my job. This is our job. Now, God was so angry with the, with the watchmen of Israel. He was so angry, and this is what God said. Not my words. God said. And, and, and if there's any pastor who's listening who is not talking, here is the verse for you. For the leaders of my people, the Lord's watchmen, me, pastors, and the Christian leaders, his shepherds are blind. They are blind and ignorant. They are like silent watchdogs. They give no warning when danger comes. They like to lie around sleeping and dreaming. In other words, pastors who are so lazy. But the Lord call them dogs. All of us are more than my own. The dog was created by God to give warnings. If you have a dog, you know what a dog normally do if a stranger will come to your place. Amen. So, when I, when I receive the message from the Lord, as I seek the Lord every Monday, I begin to seek the Lord for the word on Sunday. And this is what the Lord said. The Lord said to me, tell the people, right now people are falling away from the faith, you need to warn them. If they don't listen, then you are, you are okay. But they will, their blood will be upon themselves. But listen, this is what we are supposed to do, to bark and to give you the warning. Danger is coming. So here's what the disciples said. They asked Jesus, what sign will you signal your return and the end of the world? Now Jesus responded in verse 10, Matthew 24. It's a mistake. And many will turn away from the faith. So many, meaning not one, not, not two, not three, many will turn away from the faith. Hallelujah, Lord. So Jesus told the disciples, many will turn away from the faith. So it, it is not unusual and it is not something strange. We are witnessing the people that turn away from us. People that used to go to church, people that used to be committed to the Lord, but they are no longer in the faith. Hallelujah Lord. And I tell you later on, I will explain the reason why. Hallelujah Lord. In verse 11. And many false prophets will appear. In South America, there's a guy who declared himself to be an antichrist. And uh, he has been able to gather so many people. And, uh, and, and a lot of those people used to be Christians. But they are now following this guy who declaims how to be the Antichrist. And so I asked the question, what happened to a lot of these people? Hallelujah Lord. Amen. And so the Bible declares that the false prophets will come. Hallelujah Lord. But here's what the false prophets will do. They will use their voice to speak to the people. Verse 12. Yes. Verse 12. 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 Verse 
And my sin will be rampant everywhere. And the love of many will grow gold. Now many years ago, things like prostitution was something that is so private. People don't come out to the fall. Homosexuality, you, you hardly see anyone walking around behaving like one. But now, when we came to this street, when we shifted to here, about several years ago, this street here used to be the streets where all the Fafa stands all night. And I tell you, right now, I don't see any of them in this street. This street is called Green Street. Amen. And I'm grateful to God in Green Street. We now have one church here, another church over there, another church over there, and another church there, and there are five churches in this one street. Amen. Praise God, man! Amen. Hallelujah. We need to understand that the devil is not sleeping. He's now working and doing everything possible to take you away. To take you to hell. Hallelujah. Now many people will say, well, you know, this person was the reason why I gave up my faith. That person, well, it's because you said it's because of that person, or because of that person, it's because of that person. Look, listen. No one is responsible for your own soul. Yes, we do have people that will knock you and cause you to fall, hallelujah. The Lord will deal with them, but it is your job to stand on your feet and make sure you hang on to God. Hallelujah. Now Jesus said, many people will depart from the faith. They will leave the faith and they will go on and do whatever they want to do. First Timothy 4 verse 1. Our Lord thank you know my element. Let me, let me just go through this verse. Now the Holy Spirit told Apostle Paul clearly no ambiguity clearly it was not ambiguous it was clear as anything. He said that the last time some will turn away from the faith and they will follow deceptive spirits and teachings that come from demons. Many, not just few. So I want you to understand that the target of the devil is to take as many people to hell with him. Hallelujah. So, so, so here's, what, it, here's what, they, what Satan is doing. Trying to deviate the people and take as many people with him to hell. Hallelujah. So the Spirit of the Lord clearly says now, Hallelujah, that many will abandon their faith. Hallelujah. And follow deceiving spirits and things that are taught by demons. Now, deceiving spirits, it's a lot of them, and they come in all forms and shapes and sizes. Some, some of them are like this, some of them are like this, some of them are like this, some of them are very skinny. So all these deceiving spirits are going around deceiving people. They work on your mind, they work on your heart, they work on your attitude, they work on your reasonings. If I pay a mama, if I'm a car out there, I can't tell you, I'm like, I'm very recent, I'm very recent, I'm like, I'm a little bit of a foul, I'm a little bit of a local. And before you know it, man, you begin to say, well, I think you're right. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. I want to fast, I say, that's the idea of Joe. I want to fast, I say, that's the idea of Joe, she's talking about 50 years. So what would happen before the actual uh, coming of the Lord was that the great falling away would happen first 
and then a man of sin will appear, as you know we've just gone, we've just gone through the book of Revelation. So, so there will be a great falling away of many Christians. And this is why it is so crucial for all of us to get ready and stand on your feet. Hallelujah Lord. The great falling away will happen and in a man of lawlessness will appear, hallelujah Lord, uh, who is also called the son of perdition. Same with Judah the Iscariot. And then the coming of the Lord will happen. So if I were you, I'll, I'll be keeping my eyes watching on what happened next. Amen. Hallelujah Lord. So this is why you also need to listen to us, pastors. Our job is to watch over your soul. Hallelujah Lord. And if you happen to don't like the preaching or don't like me, listen, you know, my whole purpose of being here is to help you. Hallelujah Lord. Amen. Amen. So here's are the voices that are coming around in Matthew 24, verse 5. And why to tell you why don't we go? Wolf up there. Well, New York, you're so that to the first saying, a full time at it or tell you. Amen. So deceiving spirits are moving around. Hallelujah. They are moving around, and you wouldn't be shocked that the deceiving spirit is also sitting inside the church. So these deceiving spirits are doing their job, trying to deceive people. And in verse 11, false prophets again. So these are the deceptive voices that are speaking into your ears. Hallelujah. So you need to understand that the devil is not sitting uh, and doing nothing. He's now doing everything possible to deceive people. Amen. Now I want to ask the question, why falling away? Why are the people falling away? Hallelujah. How come you were once a Christian? You received the teaching of the Word of God. You gave your life to the Lord. You say, Today I give you my life. You are welcome into my heart. I let you be my Lord and Savior. But how come you fall away? Well, this is the reason why you fall away. Adam and Eve were Christians. But this is what happened to them, Genesis 3, verse 1. Yeah. So here's what happened. One day, even Aaron, we're not talking to God. But during that period when they were not talking to God, Satan decided to speak to them. So, I asked the question, why falling away? Well, falling away is because you have stopped talking to God, you are now allowing the devil to be speaking into your ears. So this is what happened to Adam and Eve. So why? Adam was standing right next to Eve. Eve was listening to a uh, talking, because he didn't look at the verse. The serpent was the shrewest of all the wild animals that the Lord God had made. And one day, Satan asked the woman. So while she stopped talking to God, the opportunity for Satan to talk to her. And what was Satan saying to her? Satan was challenging the truth of the word of God. Amen. Amen. Satan was saying, Eve, did God really say, don't eat that plant? So Satan was challenging. And I tell you, Satan has not stopped using the same idea. He's still using it right now. Amen. What happened? We have not learned a lesson. So when people fall away, it's because you stop talking to God. If you had been talking to God, all you will hear is 
is truth, nothing short of the truth, hallelujah Lord. You will never depart from the faith because God will be talking to you. <laughs> Look, I tell you what, there are people who are devoted to church, but the last time they prayed was 20 years ago. So what do you expect? God cannot talk to you because you don't talk to God. Any elders invite you out? Look out for who? Oh, she can't tell you more from my room on four. Or can you move the car wall? Go to the car wall. I don't want to fall away from the car wall. I don't want to fall away from the car wall. I don't want to fall away from the car wall. I don't want to fall away from the car wall. I don't want to fall away from the car wall. I don't want to fall away from the car wall. Even when, you know, you remember when in the book of Job, when all the angels came before the Lord, and Satan came also. Amen. So you think Satan doesn't come to church? Well, he's right here somewhere. Maybe under your chair, or sitting right next to you. No, no, not a person. No. Hallelujah. But the man that come up, man, 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 can go. He can hear what I'm all here for. The next person that will be talking to you is Satan. Mais là, il y a un peu de temps, 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 il y a un well, in a family situation, this is the reason why we have messy homes. Because the man is not standing up to lead your family. It is not the woman's responsibility. It is the man's responsibility to stand up and lead the family. Amen. The protector of the family and the watchman of the family is the man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And you know what happened? It is now his. I will get I will get it that way. I always say, Lord, remember this sermon. If you end up in hell, I've done my job. You need to be talking to the Lord morning, evening, afternoon, all the way through. In the morning, you will wake up and you will pray. Hallelujah, Lord. During the day, you will pray in tongues. When you're driving, you are So you're driving, but you're praying in tongues. You will not allow the devil to be talking to you. He will be talking to God all the time, and God, God will be talking to you all the time. And when you come on Sunday, you're fired up, man. One song and you, no one can stop you. Amen. Some people accuse the church of not being anointed. And they don't go, oh, you know, no, 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 it's not the sermon. The word of God is always anointed. The problem is you. You have been talking to the devil all week. If you have been talking to the Holy Spirit and God, you will be so different on Sunday morning. Amen. Come on, James. Amen. Amen. Never ever fall and wake up because all you are allowing the devil to be talking to you. Amen. And to your neighbor. It's your brother. Never ever fall and wake Hallelujah, Lord. 
You know, church, when was the use of going to church? I can I can talk, I can see God here, I can stay home. Well, bad news. Who is true to the church? Not the pastor, not anybody, it's God. Amen. And you know why? My 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 but those that go to church, they went into the temple and they saw the presence of the Lord. And they said, I see the presence of the Lord every day. Hallelujah, Jesus. Why fall away? Because the last time they were talking to God was 200 years ago. Hallelujah, Lord. Very simple things that come That's the most simple prayer, prayer to pray. In the name of the Lord, we know to go to. Yeah. The fact that we are in the same house. Yeah. Because we are in the same house. We are in the same house. We are in the same house. Amen. Don't be fooled by what they say. For the day will not come until there is a great regret. If I follow my. Let no man deceive you. If you have been talking to God, nobody can deceive you. Amen. Because any voices that will be speaking to you, anything that is not of God, you will always reject because you know that it's not from God. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. I ought to face it. You know, they don't first say no ever in matter. I'm talking fit. Yeah. They fought there. 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 But I fear that somehow, see, this is our fear. So we're not afraid, but if this is our concern, we fear that somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted. Just as Eve was deceived by. So here's what happened. When the devil was speaking to Eve, he will do the same thing to us. So Apostle Paul said, I'm concerned that you will become like Eve. Even though you have a beard, you're still Eve. Because it is a spirit that is that jumps into people. Hallelujah. The spirit that stops you from praying and talking to God. Hebrew 3 verse 12. Yeah. Hallelujah. The unbelief spirit. Unbelief spirit in the body from the living God. Hallelujah. If you allow enough time for ear for Satan to be speaking to your ears, enough time, slowly and surely. You would say to yourself, God is a liar, Satan is right. And so you will begin to walk away from the faith and into something that God had not intended for you. Then to your neighbor say, neighbor, neighbor. Do, not do not be deceived. See the unbelieving spirit, it's a spirit. Yeah. Yeah. It's waiting for a moment in your life to be jumping into your life. Hallelujah. So when I'm preaching the word of God to you, you already made a decision. I will not believe a thing you're saying. And so that spirit is deceiving you. And finally, people will leave the faith. 
Finally, people will walk away from the faith. Now, right there, you can't say, Safa Pemama Fama Rossi, the Loku, Waleko, Yongi Loku. But now you have to go for your fellow Longo, or go for your men or my yard. I live at all. Or to buy a toy, or whatever they get, rest in my Fakokua. If you want to make it to heaven, do not depart from the faith. Stay! Stay in the faith! Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Well, unrepair. There's no way we can bring them back. This is their fate. Hebrews 6, verse 4 to 6. Amen. 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 This is what happened to them. A why do you have to go to the house? Yes. 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 It is impossible to bring them back to repentance. Those who were once enlightened, those who have experienced the good things of heaven, they share in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Why? It's because they had crucified the Lord Jesus in the beginning. Hallelujah. Continue to say, neighbor. Don't ever, ever depart from the faith. Amen. 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 Who's not going to make it like you will get your own? My auto. Oh, yes, you can be so. If you look at what happened to him, he healed people, he raised people from the dead, and then he climaxed his ministry on the cross. What a way to end the ministry. Can you imagine? Can you imagine someone like me that I'm ministering to the people and then? The end of my ministry is crucifixion. Can you imagine? But that's what happened to Jesus. So if you think, well, come on, welcome to the real world. There are more problems of being a Christian than not being a Christian. But that's the thing, the Lord God gave us the power of the blood and the power of the Holy Spirit. He gave us the power to demonstrate. Ways, some of the ways that Satan used to talk to people. I'm from my dad, I see number one, internet. Number one, internet. Movies. Go to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Internet. <laughs> the business world has created the internet. But looking at the internet is good because we are using the internet to spread the gospel. Praise God. But the devil is using the internet to be speaking to you and me. If you watch the movie, even though you are just watching the movie, but the movie is speaking to you. Come on, people, take your hands and say, the blue movie is speaking to you. <laughs> Neighbor, 
The floor will be speaking to you. Some of my friends actually put up some posts that is not good. 
I drink your name out of my friends list. This old woman wanted to uh, get rid of the bad friends on Facebook. You'll take the, uh, she'll get the tweet and tweet out the news. <laughs> Remove them from your friends. Because the Facebook, let's see, man, let me go up, let me have a group of my eye on your Twitter's account. Now, here's what most people actually do they don't go and talk to the person. That they're having an issue with, hello. They will go on the Facebook and let the whole world know. I know the words they put on Facebook, man. Like, what on earth? One of my nephew did that. I ran him and I said, "Your name is going to be removed from my Facebook." And I've got honestly on my Facebook, I have a lot of my nephews and nieces and my relatives. And, and they ask me to be a friend on Facebook. I either drink them away, or I just leave it there. Hopefully the Lord will speak to me and uh, maybe I'll accept the request. But I, honestly, I say, Lord, do I need to, do I need this person on my Facebook? And if the Lord say no, drink it out. Because those people speak to you indirectly through the Facebook when you open up your page and they are they are accusing, they are uh, doing some really silly things on Facebook. But you have no idea that the devil is talking to you. So be cautious and know what needs to be done. Say, Holy Spirit, what do I need to do here? He will tell you. That's why you need to be talking to him all the time. The reason why I need to have lots of friends is for business reason. That maybe they want to buy a life from me. Or maybe I can recruit them to a large business. But if you say some bad stuff on Facebook, your name is being tuned out. So, the other thing that the devil used to speak to us is pornographic materials. Then to your neighbor and say, neighbor, the devil is talking. Why aren't you talking to your neighbor? Is it because you're doing it or is it because you Number two, selling your souls to the devil for, for fame. Now, I think I spent about two or three hours early this morning. I was starting from the afternoon until early this morning. I was reading through the people that sold their souls to the devil for fame. Hallelujah. So, the devil told them, I will make you famous if you give me your soul. And most of these people are musicians. Abu Mayoko, we are musicians. The devil targets you because the devil can use you to enlarge the kingdom of darkness. That's the reason why your music career and your talent must be devoted to the Lord God. Hell is not something that you live there for a few hours. Hell is forever. But I know it's so easy. That's the reason why musicians are, are so have very bad attitude. Not, not, not here, but most of them. They begin their music career in the church and they find they slowly walk away because they're looking for fame. Fame will take you to hell. So here are some of them. Robert Johnson. Bruce Sima, the guitarist. He said to the devil, devil, if you give me fame, I'll give you my soul. And he did. Died tragically. Bob Dylan is a musician, one of the famous one. 
He said, give me fame or I'll give you my soul. The devil did it, he died tragically. Theophilus of Adam. Now this guy, uh, Theophilus of Adam, was a Catholic priest. But this Catholic priest wanted to hold the position of being a treasurer, so he wants to fiddle around with the money. So when the opportunity came for him to be the bishop, he denied it and he gave the opportunity to his uh, uh, enemy, one of, one of the other priests. So he gave the opportunity to be bishop to his enemy for, for the reason that his enemy would make him the treasurer. And then this, his enemy never chose him to be the treasurer. Then he turned to the devil and said, Devil! If you give me fame within the church, I give you my soul. So, he actually got it. And on the day he confessed of what he did, a few hours later he died as a Catholic priest. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to say I'm not accusing any church. I grew up in the Catholic church. I'm just telling you what happened. This is the information I found. So I'm, I'm not accusing God. All my family is a Catholic. I grew up in a Catholic church. My grandfather was a social. I've got so many cousins and that are nuns and priests. But I'm telling you that this is, I was, I was shocked to read the story. I was, I was really shocked to read the story about this guy, Theophilus of Adam. He sold his soul to the devil while still a priest. Niccolò Paganini, he was a violinist at 15 years old age. His mother, his mother actually wanted him to be famous. So, the, the, the 15 year old had no idea what the mother was doing, but the mother went to the devil and, and, uh, and said to the devil, Devil, I'll give you my son if you give him fame. So as a result, the poor kid had no idea what was going on. And as a result, he died tragically. Um, Jack Parson. Jack Parsons sold his soul to Satan. And uh, he summoned the goddess called Babylonian, Babylonian Workings. So the, the goddess name was Babylon Working. And he summoned, summoned the goddess to help him create a jet fuel. You know the jet fuel? The fuel left on my body. It hits. So the devil gave him his request, not the devil. And right now, NASA is now using the jet fuel created by this guy. But the devil actually helped him to create the fuel. And I was so interested to read the story out of the middle. Now, I don't know what happened to him. I did not read the end of the story. But this guy actually asked the goddess called Babylon working. I was Presley saw his soul to the devil. Tyler the Creator sold his soul to the devil. Eminem sold his soul to the devil. There are many others. The list goes on. Hallelujah. Now the reason why I mention these things to help you understand that the devil is still talking to the people. And I was very shocked that even the people that are in the church, the devil also is talking to them and they sold their soul to the devil. Well, you know what? I was named after uh, Father Cyprian. So Father Cyprian, Father Morris, Father Morris, Cyprian, or something young or something more. So I'm, I'm, I'm a very Catholic uh, in myself, growing up in a Catholic church. I love it. Some of the fundamental doctrines of the Christian church were formulated by the Catholic church. I don't know, but I'm talking about individuals who behave like this guy here. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, so don't sell your soul to the devil. Don't sell it because you well, I'm very, if I come to the eight one hours you can make it give I don't like a bike. 
Eh, kalau fanya ini bawa tu ngalih fein bayi, ini uang lah fanya sakan ya, macam tu sok ya, ya, mana fein ya, we? Number three, wrong people in your life. Wrong people in your life will be used by the devil to be speaking to you, to talk to you. Finally, you will not believe the word of God and the real Lord. If you are a Christian hanging around with a non-Christian, well, guess what? The non-Christian friend is going to be talking to you about stuff. Amen. When do you go to church? Yeah. Any nonsense, it's just which of them, all they want is money. Mm. They just, the, the, the pastor only wants money. The church only wants money. Yeah. And then finally, you mm. <laughs> I'm not why you and I live in Kalpongu, you know, why you live in Kalpongu, they are poor. Hallelujah, Lord. Because of the wrong people you have in your life, hallelujah, Lord. I was grateful that before I became a Christian, I was grateful to be introduced to Pastor Tabale Matayi. The man who used by God to bring the gospel to us and return to the Lord. Samoa. Then that guy in our lives, he was talking to us about God. Hallelujah, Lord. But we're so blessed to have Andy Foster in our lives. 80 years of our Christian walk with the Lord. Andy was like a father to us. Uh, Andy, Andy Foster, for you that don't know, Andy Foster is, a, is a, a millionaire who lives in America and Samoa. Hallelujah, Lord. This guy has helped us, not only counseling us even right now, but helping us financially. Hallelujah, a great man of God in this house. I have a room, a room there I can stay. And every time I go to Samoa, I, I stay in that room assigned to us. Hallelujah, and and uh, Andy has been talking to us. So blessed to have lucky in my life. Hallelujah, these are the people that talk positive stuff into your life. Look at Jerry, what choose your friends wisely. Love everybody and say hi. And then when you walk away, see you later, alligator. But if it's a Christian, don't call him an alligator. Don't call him an alligator. Hallelujah, Lord. So love everybody else, but choose your friends wisely. Hallelujah, Lord. I tell you, if I were you, I would choose the people that are going forward. Hallelujah, Lord. Why? Because a dead battery cannot start a dead battery. Come on, church, you understand what I'm saying? That's the reason why if you are paid, look for a battery that is alive. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Alamao is going to be a fee. But if you are not going to be a successful person, I'll be like, hmm, you're a successful one. I'm gone. Do yourself a favor. Hang around with the successful people. Hang around with the good Christians, the people that are speaking life to you. Amen. Amen. I forget my motto, if I don't advise all of my, my attitudes are wrong friends, you know what? You will end up somewhere that you will not like, hallelujah, Lord. Amen. Now here's the solution, number one, talk to God in prayer. Talk to him in prayer. Dedicate a time for prayer, hallelujah, Lord. Talk to God long enough, you will never depart from him. Amen. Psalm 27, verse 4. David said, I like to dwell in the house of the Lord. Why? Because imagine if you dwell in the house of the Lord all day. By the time you come out of the house of the Lord, you are so anointed. Amen. You will feel blown up inside. You will never want to leave the grave. Because you have been spending time in the presence of the Lord. And all you hear was God speaking love and mercy and kindness. Amen. Success and wealth and prosperity into your life. And after that long enough time with the Lord, you will come up fired up. And you're ready to take on the world. 
You spend enough time with the negative people, you will come out like a duck. You will walk like this. Like a duck. Spend enough time with an the ego, they will teach you how to fly high. Why you look at me like this? I turn to your neighbor and say, spend enough time with egos and they will make you fly. Number two, let God talk to you. Allow the Holy Spirit to be speaking to you. Allow Him to talk to you. Allow the Holy Ghost, even if you don't understand, they say, the Holy Ghost, I'm here, I'm ready. I need to hear you. Please talk to me. Very simple prayer. He will talk to you. Hallelujah. Make time for God to talk to you. If you don't make time, then He can't talk to you because you have no time. Number three. Let God's word speak to you. If you allow God's word to speak to you all the time, I tell you, you will never depart from the faith. Psalm 119, verse 103. Oh, sorry. First Timothy 4, 13. Yeah, if I sacrifice the word to spot you. Yeah. But I have to say you are old, what to. Yeah. But I have to say you are old, what to. Yeah. Uh, Paul said to Timothy, till I come, give attention to the reading, to exhortation and teaching God's word. Give attention to the reading and exhortation. Men I lay out this one for poor people, so let's attention to all that of them, but yeah, poor. Come on, church. Men I lay out this one, let's attention to all that of them, but yeah, poor. Come on, who's by here? I'm amazed, Mr. Jess, I'm amazed how many people spend so much money buying expensive telephones and mobile phones, but they cannot afford the Piper. So the good one is only $150. Follow my everybody follow, follow my spend good amount of money buying a good study Bible. Because a good study Bible will speak to you. I forget, I forget. Who's a lot there? What I'm saying here, I'm thinking. Some of you are saying. Whatever. I will never buy it. If you go to Saudi Arabia, 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 Saudi Yes. Enough, you will come out so 
elected and ready to take on the world. And you will say to yourself, I'll never depart from the faith. I will hang on to God. Because, you know, the word of God is speaking. It's God speaking to you. This word is called Rima. It's a spoken word of God. I tell you what, there are so many people that come forward and they fall down under the anointing and they go home and they came back the next Sunday, nothing changes. Because they've been influenced by the atmosphere of anointing and that's why the power came upon the south. And then when you leave here, no word in your head that is going to help you. But if you fall here, reading the word of God, getting on to know God, hallelujah, you go out, you come in, you are absolutely moving forward. Into your neighbor, say neighbor, read the word. Read the Bible. On the Tito, one more if I put up, a woman in the other five hours, who sweat Tito, and I sweat Tito for you. Meaning that you, you don't need your Bible, you don't know where Tito is, you don't know where Titus is. Oh, you're not pushing for the car, but I tell you, I like, oh, I'm not going to come to film for you there too. Something will change in your life. You know what? Attitude change. The word of God can change your attitude, change your characters, change your beliefs. I want to end the story by telling you a story of an Iranian. This guy uh, apparently was locked in prison and he happened to have a small Gideon Bible somebody gave him. And while he was in prison reading, he had no idea why he was reading it. And uh, he read it and he read it and read it. And finally, at the end of the reading, the Lord spoke to him and he said that he found that the Lord walked in the room. And at the end of just reading the Bible, he gave his life to the Lord. Then Hodgson, who is an Australian millionaire, was speaking at our conference in Samoa, did the same thing. He said his wife has been knocking him to believe the Lord, but he didn't believe the Lord. And one day on his trip, the, uh, his wife actually put a Bible in his bag. And while he was going through the bag, he found the Bible, his wife put in the bag. So Dave Hudson actually took out the Bible. He goes to try, he was trying to kill the time, so he was just reading the Bible. And continue on reading, uh, he found it very interesting. And then he continued on reading, he continued on reading. And at the end of the singing that he went to, he gave his life to the Lord. Dave Hodgson created a ministry for Kingdom in Mister, the Mister. And he is now raising a lot of multi-millionaires to go back to churches. Because, you know, in the space of five years, he went from no money to a multi-billionaire in Australia, one of the richest men in Australia. And so all these millionaires uh, went to him and they asked uh, Dave Hodgson, what is the key to your success? And Dave Hudson said, the word of God. And here's the equation. He gave the equations to, to all these millionaires. He said, the will of God, the way of God equals success. He said, if you know the will of God, you do the will of God. It's equal to being a multi-millionaire. So he started the ministry to raise up to bring back the millionaires back into the church for the sake of financing the kingdom. So right now in Australia, he created a ministry which is called uh, the Sheep Nation. And the Sheep Nation, meaning that he wants to bring back all these millionaires and create a nation as a Sheep Nation. And uh, just during the lockdown, here's a fact. The richest country in the world per capita is not America. The richest nation in the world per capita is Australia. Not America. Per capita. Australia is the richest nation in the world. And I tell you, he kept on telling us during that conference that is now working on creating Australia to be the first sheep nation. So those are the languages you'll be hearing from David Hodgson. This man devoted every Wednesday to go and spend time with God. He would go into the bush and he would read the Bible and he would pray. As a businessman, multimillionaire, 
We spent the whole day on Wednesday just to pray and read the Bible. And right now, he has managed to bring back many millionaires back into the church, and they are now financing the kingdom. They, or not only the local churches, but around the world missions, hallelujah. So this guy is actually doing a phenomenal work. And if you ask me why, it's because of reading the word of God. I want you to, I want you to stand on your feet. Last Sunday, about listening to God. And I know that this is not something that I will stop talking about. I will be continuing talking about and listening to God. I am trying to listen to the voice of the Lord because I know that in Deuteronomy 28, if you listen to the voice, diligently listen to the voice of the Lord, you will be blessed going out, you will be blessed coming in, your pocket will be blessed, you're blessed in a field, you're blessed in everything you put your hand on. When the Lord begins to talk to you and speak to you, He will give you things that will make you a successful person. Hallelujah. You will enjoy life. The Lord Jesus said, I came that you may enjoy life. But the devil came to steal, kill, and destroy. But the Lord Jesus said, I came so that you may enjoy life. Hallelujah. Being a Christian, you should enjoy life. If you stay, if you stay, if you do not depart from the faith, your destiny will be absolutely amazing. But if you decide to leave the faith, hallelujah, the devil is waiting and hell is also waiting for you. James, I want you to lift your hands to the Lord this morning. I want to say that if you are not a born again Christian, if you have not given your life to the Lord, this is your opportunity to give your life to the Lord. If you have not made a decision to give your life to the Lord, I'll give you this opportunity for you to come. And just like we did, just like I did many, many years ago, when I was 21 years old. I remember that day when I walked forward and I gave my life to the Lord. Oh, I fall, I fell, and I stumble, I don't know, but I get up and I go. I decided to stay in the faith. Hallelujah. Looking back, I never regretted my decision I made many years ago. So I want to ask if you are not born again Christian, here's your opportunity to come and receive the Lord. If you are a Christian but you're not listening to the voice of the Lord no more, if you have decided to Reject the voice of the Lord. If you have not listened to, if you have not, the last time you spoke to the Lord was many, many months ago, if not years. I want you to say, Lord, to, today, I make up my mind to listen to you. Make up my mind to begin to open my ears to listen to you. Life can be challenging. Man, I tell you, even Christians go through stuff. All of us, we go to this stuff. And sometimes we feel that, that the Lord God is, has gone and left us. But no, He never, He never bent. It's just a feeling, it's just our feelings. But the promise is the promise. He promised He will never leave you, He will never forsake you. Amen. And that promise stands. He remains truthful to His promise. His God, He never lied. He will always tell the truth and he will give you the truth. Nothing short of the truth. I want you to lift up your hands and Lord say, Lord, I'm giving you my life. Lord, I'm giving you my life. Say, Lord, I'm giving you my life. I bless you, Jesus. Oh, say, Lord, I'm giving you my life. This is your moment. The presence of the Lord is here. This is your moment. God is here. This is your moment. He's here to set you free. This is your moment.
want to put your hands on your ears. The Lord Jesus said to, in the book of Revelation, he said, those who have ears, listen to what the Spirit is saying. And you know, we all have ears. But I wonder why the Bible says, those who have ears, listen. It means that we may have ears, but we're not listening, we're not hearing, we're not hearing the voice of God. Because we may have so many disturbances, there are so many voices that are out there in the world that are speaking into your ears. And as a result, it has been cloudy and you're not able to hear clearly. In your sense of belief in the Lord, you say, Lord, I give you my ears. I allow you to speak to me right now in the name of Jesus. You, you say to the Lord, Lord, I ask you to speak into my ears right now. Let me hear your voice. If you have not heard the voice of the Lord for a long time, that is the worst punishment. When God is not speaking anymore, it's the worst punishment for anybody. But if the Lord is speaking to you, He's happy with you. He wants to talk to you more and more and more. He wants to transform your lives. He wants to speak to you the word of God. Say, Lord, I surrender you my ears, my mind, my soul. I give you my life. I give you my life. Jesus Christ. Why not in the name of Jesus? I command every demonic forces that are speaking to the ears of your people in this church right now.